morning, everybody. This is the first time I had an experience that before coming on stage, a gentleman was asking me, take off your earrings. And I said, is that the end? And he promised me that's the end, for otherwise we were facing a problem. And I'm going to talk about freedom online and not freedom for gentlemen to ask me to take off stuff. Um, why freedom online? Why matters? Why we must protect it and how we are doing that? That is what is main in my address today. And I know that many of you in this campaign for internet freedom are quite active. And please don't stop. We need you. I need you to give, indeed, the backing for a policy that is focused and based on freedom online. The internet is the new frontier of freedom in Western democracies, but also around the world. It's not stopping in Europe. It's not stopping in the developed countries. It is all over the globe, so to say. It's changing the politics, it's changing the policies, the economies in the world, and some find that change too disruptive, uh, that it is too challenging, and they want to stop it. And therefore, I need your activity. For we can't afford, we don't want to have that uh, limited speed. But remember, how many kinds of freedom we can promote and protect online. It's not only talking about fundamental freedoms, like freedom of speech and the right to privacy, that is quite clear, but it's also talking about the freedom to innovate. It is also talking about rewarded and recognized for your own bright ideas in the way you think it and you think fit, and the freedom of the internet architecture as a whole. So far more than just a couple of principles. Yes, the internet should be open, and yes, it should be free, but that's not the same as being a lawless wild west, and that we have to discuss too. We have recently seen how many thousands of people are willing to protest against rules, which they see as constraining the openness and innovation on the internet. And I have deep respect for them. It's a strong new political voice. And as a force for openness, I welcome it. Even if I do not always agree with everything, it says on every subject. But that is democracy, isn't it? It is freedom of speech. It is activating a dialogue. We are now likely to be in a world without SOPA and without ECTA. You are hearing it correctly, without the two. Now we find and we need to find solutions to make the internet a place of freedom openness and innovation, fit for all citizens, not just for the techno avant-garde like you. And the fact is that sometimes online activities have real-world implications. And like it or not, people sometimes use online tools to conspire for horrific crimes like murder or child abuse and others launch cyber attacks to breach or destabilize internet systems. Attacks which increasingly impact on people's daily lives as ever more transactions go digital. I know that this is the tiny minority of online activity, and I know that we can't overreact. As in other fields of life, we must balance Liberty and security, the two need to be in balance. But neither can we ignore it. And the internet has become too important to just leave its future to good fortune. That doesn't work. That is why we must recognize rights 
and responsibilities online for an online world that is an increasingly important part of our society. And today I would like to focus on the future, on the chance for internet freedom to unlock Europe's potential. Increasingly, people are realizing that the web is capable of powering seemingly infinite innovation and that we don't have to be constrained by the habits of the past, but can be released by the opportunities of the future. Isn't that nice? Opportunities of the future. And that whole industries, once based on limitation and control, could now be based on customer focus, sharing and interactivity. Freedom online can deliver that potential to innovate, but systems that are dated, closed or complex can strangle it. What can freedom online give us? For one thing, a huge economic boost, an open internet can power innovation, surge productivity, and can put innovation tools into the hands of ordinary enterprising people. And that's why I'm convinced, ladies and gentlemen, web entrepreneurs are the key to our future growth. And I want to make sure they have the tools to innovate, web entrepreneurs. Those people can do amazing things if the only barrier was their creativity and imagination. We had have no problem at all, but I know there are other barriers. Entrepreneurs need the tools to network better, and I'm working on that, I promise you. They need credit and political recognition. They deserve, and our recent Tech All-Stars competition is looking for Europe's hottest startup talent. And they need our universities to be innovation hubs, inspiring, empowering the innovators of tomorrow, and I'm working on that too. And I'm also working on open standards for open markets. We still haven't completed our telecom single market. A recent study showed that this could be costing us as much as 110 billion euros per year. So this year we will engage with European standardization bodies and the industry to determine the best way forward. For standards that mean content providers and operators can get a uniform service offering, avoid duplicate charges and exploit economies of scale. We also need to preserve openness of access to internet service, what some call net neutrality. People need transparent offers so they know they are getting what they pay for. They need to be able to easily switch providers or deals if they don't like the service they are getting. And they need to always have the option of accessing the full unlimited best efforts internet if that's what they want. But most of all, web entrepreneurs need us to identify and deal with the barriers that stand in their way of their online freedom. Obstacles like complicated and incompatible systems for identifying and pay and licensing like 27 different sets of rule books when there could be one one single digital market, so to say. And all those things can crush innovation and keep bright ideas confined in unprofitable national markets. Because freedom also means that freedom to innovate in business models. One by one, different sectors are facing up to new online realities and to the decline of old ways of doing business and the rise of new opportunities. The music sector realized that long ago. Other sectors like audiovisual are now starting to. Our Media Futures Forum is looking at how this applies to the media sector in general. Of course, 
changing for the digital age doesn't mean always giving material away free of charge, but it does mean we need to be open to new approaches, new ways to distribute, new ways to be rewarded for work, and new ways for people to access great online content easily. Sometimes people are prevented from making this change by out-of-date rules and practices, like those on copyright licensing. Other times, it's just that they need a change of mindset, that they are too comfortable with old habits to realize the world has changed. Either way, we need to wake up. We need to smell the coffee. This is why I am frustrated about the lack of progress in creating a genuine digital single market. And if we are really going to help a free internet and help web entrepreneurs in particular, we must promote an open culture. And in particular, I think public sector data is a gold mine just sitting there. If we unlock it, if we could boost creativity, boost the economy, and boost democratic accountability. And that is why we have proposed legal changes that will show the way forward on open data. Making data cheaper and easier to reuse, meaning more data sets with less complicated conditions. It's not just about unlocking new data sets. It is about promoting a whole new attitude within governments about openness culture online, creating a new fuel for innovation within our single market. And I admit this would in one sense be a relatively modest step, but it's an important one affecting the change to an open mindset. And it could be a prelude to the wider work needed on copyright reform. At the moment, it is still just a proposal on open data. And before becoming law, it needs the democratic scrutiny and approval of the European Parliament and the national governments in council. I'm convinced, ladies and gentlemen, of the benefits. I'm convinced of the public's appetite for change. And so I'm calling on those institutions to agree the proposals swiftly and ambitiously. And if you have ideas for how we can make it more convincing to them, please let me know. But of course, there is another very significant thing we mean by freedom online. It is about freedom to express yourself, a fundamental right and a pillar of a democracy. We must defend it online and off. Last year, Hungary introduced a new media law, as you are aware. Significant parts were incompatible with European law not least because rules about registration and balanced reporting could have imposed heavy obligations on all kinds of online content, from online forums to personal blogs. So I pushed for and achieved changes to those proposed rules. And since then, Hungary's own constitutional court has ruled that the new law unconstitutionally limited freedom also for the written press. Both the European Commission and the Council of Europe continue to have concerns that this law is not fully compatible with our European norms. The Hungarian government needs to do more, and we will follow it, I can assure you. It is an important area. Clearly, there are high public expectations for the EU's ability to act. But equally, we can only enforce fundamental rights in areas subject to EU law. So we need to think seriously about whether the EU has sufficient powers in this area. In the EU, of course, our freedom of speech is protected by law. 
all actions taken place within a framework of safeguards and legal protections, as well as a well-established political culture that favors openness. And that gives me confidence that problems that arise can be fixed through a combination of legal tools and political dialogue. And as you might know, yesterday was UN World Press Freedom Day, a day to remind us that around the world, people, including journalists and bloggers, do not always enjoy the same rights we have in the EU. One example is Enula Futulaya, an Azerbaijan journalist and human rights activist, and this year the winner of the UNESCO's World Press Freedom Prize. And he is doing a great job. Indeed, many don't always have the right to an open democratic debate, nor the legal protection of the Charter of Fundamental Rights, nor safeguards like oversight and recourse. In spite of that, indeed, because of it, in such places, the right to express oneself is all the more important. And for those who struggle for democracy, we just ensure they have a voice. The internet can give them that voice. We saw that with the Arab Spring. The internet alone didn't cause that uprising. It's much more complicated than that. We all are aware. But clearly online platforms gave protesters <coughs> a means to organize and a harness <coughs> for the power of a surging desire for democracy. In Egypt, the government tried to turn off the internet in a failed attempt to silence this content. Elsewhere, despotic governments use communications technology as a tool of surveillance and repression. We cannot allow that happen. Where countries struggle for democracy, I want to ensure there is no disconnect. And we will be doing that in many different ways by supporting those brave human rights defenders who work against cyber censorship in undemocratic regimes, through human rights guidelines to ensure EU companies play their part, and through European and international coordination. There's one final point I'd like to make, um, and that is about freedom. F too often, freedom and security are caricatured in incompatible alternatives. As so measures to ensure one can only be at the expense of the other. In fact, the opposite is true, because there is no freedom without security. These concepts are interdependent, and they are complementary. And I may have the legal right to walk down a particular road at night. But am I truly free to do so if it's not safe? Likewise, people aren't really going to use the internet freely unless they know they are in control of their privacy, that their personal data will be handled transparently and fairly, and that interdependence is why liberty and security are mentioned in the very same article, the very same sentence of the European Convention on Human Rights. On Wednesday, last Wednesday, we launched our strategy to create a better internet for kids. For me, that is crucial. I think we have the responsibility for those vulnerables in our society. Safety is all the more important for the most vulnerable and assuring this is everyone's civic responsibility. And at the same time, I realize that the online world can be a great place for kids to discover, to learn, to interact and to create but only when they have the confidence to freely explore. There are two main strands to my philosophy there. Number one, 
we must avoid crushing the openness and freedom that drives online innovation to avoid collateral damage to the internet architecture. And second, we must acknowledge that we can never totally eliminate risk for children. We can just reduce them. Sadly, children will always face risk online, just as they will always face risk like traffic in the real world. Rather, we need simple tools that educate and empower children and enable them to deal with those risks, just as we do in the offline world, so to say. And I'm pleased that the leading internet companies have joined a coalition to make the internet a better place for children. They are working together to develop solutions to develop solutions before the end of the year to empower parents and the children. And that is my vision for a free and an open internet. At once a vehicle for innovation, a platform for free expression, and a place to exercise the liberties ensured through safety and security. And the best thing about the internet is that it is open and intent to keep it that way is my strong belief and my line. Thank you. Thank you very much. Vielen, vielen Dank, Nelly Krös. Um, sind da, und das nehme ich mal schwer an, irgendwelche Fragen? Are there any questions? Einfach melden, ich komme dann vorbei. Da hinten, na klar, logisch, da hinten. Hello, good morning. Um, thanks, thanks for your keynote. Um, I have one specific question that um, uh, basically addresses one of the in my opinion, basic issues that the internet has is that all uh, relevant infrastructures, especially the companies, are turning into monopolies. And uh, for instance, we see companies like Google, Facebook, and Apple battling with each other. Um, they all rely on a network economy and they all turn into monopolies. And that the interdependence between, let's say, traditional media companies and those um, infrastructure companies is starting to become even more difficult. Now all those companies are buying, for instance, patents left and right and uh, strengthening their monopoly position. And isn't that um, um, the opposite of what you are trying to achieve? That's basically the question. Thank you for your challenging uh, remark and question. Um, I'm pragmatic and I'm realistic. I'm aware of what is at stake. I don't need to explain to you with my past in my first term in office in the Commission, I was the one who had to deal with uh, competition policy, and I'm certain that most of you are aware that I was not only preaching that I'm against monopoly and misbehaving and abusing uh, situations, but that I was also acting. We should make a difference between um, how a monopoly, quote unquote, is dealt with, and therefore, and sorry to take a bit more time to explain what anyhow my vision is, we need clear rules of the game. And only saying we don't like the US Google, by the way, Google and Facebook and Apple, and they all are global companies with most cases head offices in the US, but uh, anyhow, they are global companies and they have to follow the rules of the game. And that is where I absolutely am uh, acting if they are not following the rules of the game. And of course, telecom uh, operators, the incumbents, but not only the incumbents, are complaining that they are using their infrastructure. We should far more than we are doing, also try to be active in the services and in the products that they are offering. I'm not the one who is 
is fearing difficulties. I am the one who is trying to use all the open uh, internet possibilities and opportunities. And what is at stake? And therefore, I ask you, give me food for thought. For in itself, we are all aware that the products of the Googles and the Apples and uh, the Facebooks are absolutely preferred by most of the citizens. So quite often people are complaining, and when I'm looking, they do have the iPad, they do have the iPhone, and they are on internet, uh, and they are using the Facebook. So we should be quite precise what is at stake and I'm not the one who is blocking services that are uh, taking into account the rules of the game. And so far, I think that what is mentioned, following the rules of the game, and we have to do more, by the way, we have to do more to be transparent and precise in what are the rules of the game and working on that. Thank you. Sind da noch andere Fragen? Any more questions? Yeah. yeah. Kleinen Moment. Hi, uh, I also like to thank you for your uh, introduction. It was uh, quite interesting. I do have one question uh, related basically to the previous one. You just asked for thought, food of thought. So um, I think if we want to protect the internet and keep it an open place, uh, wouldn't you agree that it's probably the best idea to make sure that there's no single party who can control it? So like in Egypt, where the government was able to take down the internet, um, I think that shows that no matter who is in control, it's a problem, whether it's companies or governments. There are a couple of efforts trying to basically create an infrastructure where nobody can control the internet. Don't you think that is the direction things should take? In general, I couldn't agree more, but Again, I'm coming back to the rules of the game. Then those users of internet, and thanks heaven, there are quite a number, by the way, I'm still worried about a high number of European citizens that, are ne that have never visited internet. Can you imagine? I just visited Italy and uh, I got the latest figure, 41% of the Italian population has never ever visited the internet. And thanks heaven, the general figure in Europe is a bit more positive, but still is worrying. It is around 30%, and taking into account that our system with all those new technology challenges is based on that. I can't afford to accept those exclusive uh, numbers in uh, the traffic uh, of, of internet, but I'm misusing your question. What is at stake that the rules of the game are, um, uh, are there, and that it's not only that they are there, but that they are indeed uh, taken into account. And that is a bit my worry, for we also are talking about the copyright. If someone is asking me what in your portfolio is worrying most, two issues, the role um, of the copyright not solved yet, and not up to date, so to say, and that is connected with the rules of the game, and that is connected with what are you accepting in the internet? Is there a, uh, an authority needed, yes or no? Well, we do have some experience in other fields, in competition, but also in telecom and so on. So I'm not in favor for Big Brother is watching you if everybody is taking the rule, not only for granted, but seriously. But having said that, we should be aware, and the other one uh, of my worry is uh, the position of children. I think they are the vulnerables in the whole internet development, and that we have to do quite a bit, and therefore I'm grateful and looking forward to the result of that report of the 31 uh, CEOs that will deliver hopefully practical solutions for having more trust and certainty. Um, but all in all, uh, and we learn from those countries, and you were mentioning one, uh, Egypt, but uh, it, it is uh, not the, the only one on the list, so to say. There are quite a number. 
So we still have to be aware that there is a lot of abuse and misuse. It's not only positive news internet, it's also misused by certain regimes, so to say. So follow the rules and of the game, for otherwise the game is over. It's just like football. If there are no rules, or if the rules are just tackled, then the game is not fun anymore. Die nächste Frage ist da. Um, I would like to ask you two questions. Could you uh, go into more detail on two issues? One is net neutrality. How, what are your intentions to make sure net neutrality will exist in the future? And the second is, um, um, you mentioned that you will make sure EU companies will play their part in countries where there's struggle against dictatorship. How will you make sure that EU companies won't deliver um, technologies um, that enable surveillance in censored countries? Um, net neutrality. Um, I will start um, discussions about net neutrality. Let's be um, clear that we are on the same uh, wave, so to say, or on the same page, and that our definition of net neutrality is there. Um, I follow the rule and I follow the definition of net neutrality that it is possible for everyone to join and that uh, indeed taking into account that there is a limitation on the capacity that we have to give the floor to everyone but that there can be a follow in, in which uh, that is given. Um, we are uh, preparing a proposal and uh, I am absolutely certain that there will be a discussion afterwards and I'm looking forward to that discussion. But there is no special treatment for one and there should be competition. And that is main. For if there is competition, it is up to you in your situation, if you think that you are not treated in a decent way, to just move to another one, and that should be possible. So that is answer question one. Uh, question two, um, I'm taking this question to just push on the standardization, for we should indeed make far more global standardization efforts. Yesterday, um, I um, had a cup of coffee with uh, a minister of the Japanese government, and we were pushing again, for we are talking about uh, an issue that is global. It's not, it's not limited, it's not ring fence for Europe or US, it is really global. We need to have standardization. We need to be aware that we are losing time if we are not doing that, and that is giving a answer to your question too for then it can't be, it shouldn't be, misused by certain companies in saying this is it and that's uh, all that there is, no way. But we also should take into account, and um, taking your uh, question for another uh, love baby, so to say, it's cloud computing and I'm certain that quite a number of you are interested in what's going on with cloud computing. We are preparing a strategy for cloud computing. For my main worry is that if we, Europe, um, if we are not able to give our strategy, our thoughts and our philosophy about cloud computing, then we are in a position that other, one, that other ones, that for example the US is dictating how we should follow the line. Don't misunderstand me, I'm not pleading for a European cloud, but I'm pleading, and more than pleading, I'm preparing for a huge discussion and a very interesting discussion what Europe's position is in cloud computing. For me, it is a tremendous challenge, and it is connected with the citizens. It's not only talking about big companies, the multinationals or whatever, it's talking about the small and medium-sized companies, it's talking about the citizens. If you just have a cloud locker with you, the only one who have the locker key, then it is also connected with trust, security, and with a less cost pattern than we are used to. Hello, uh, my name is Henrik. I'm an internet activist and journalist. 
Um, I'm very happy to see an EU commissioner at an event like this. So thank you very much for being here and, and, and cut, um, touching on so many important issues. Um, one issue that I wanted to get a bit more into detail with is ACTA, because I, I think there's been a very strong disconnect between the sort of emotions and, and ways of expressing themselves from, I think a, a Polish blogger termed it, we the web kids, and sort of this movement and what happens on your turf in the EU Commission, um, a language which came from the Trade Commissioner, which seemed to be very one-sided, if you see it from the other perspective, and, and vice versa, allegations of being undemocratic, and I'm very happy to hear that you at least see this movement as a democratic movement. But I'm interested in hearing your personal experience of this process, because personally I find that ACTA should have been dismissed solely on grounds of purpose, and so I'm interested in, in how in the future we can ensure processes that hear both voices. Thank you. I was just thinking when you were mentioning I'm one of the, uh, the web kids, I would love to be at the end of my term in office one of the web mothers. So, uh, okay. But then you will certainly face me, then you have to prove, and that, is, that makes sense. Um, Akta, um, first a general uh, line, if you allow me. I think that talking about movements and I'm a big believer in democracy, I don't need to explain that, we all are. Um, we are uh, looking forward to far more discussion. And what did happen with the big movement in the outside world is facing not only Brussels, all the capital, so to say, that there is a difference in just voting with your feet and with the legal preparation in a democratic system. I'm not saying that one is better than the other, but both need each other. And what was, for me, and I'm talking on a personal base, what was the most important one is that this was a wake-up call for anyhow Brussels. So it was not anymore aren't they aware that we are doing our utmost and so on? No, it was knocking the boat and uh, indeed um, a wake up call. Having said that, and well, don't worry about ACTA anymore. I was quite explicit. I'm certain that when I'm back in Brussels that I will get a message that I was too explicit, but I'm always saying I'm Dutch, so straightforward, come on. Um, and I don't need a new term in office and, and well. Um, having ACTA itself, and that is what I'm asking you too to think over. So keep ACTA away, but the content of ACTA was connected with copyright, as far as my responsibility was at stake. And I am one of those believers that artists, creators, writers, they need a decent remuneration. If we don't give them a decent remuneration, then culture is over, to say. And I will never forget that one of the big singers was coming over for a cup of coffee, and that he was saying, Nelly, if you don't are aware that we need to get a de decent living. And he explained to me that he had already a very decent living, so he was not talking about himself, but about his successor, so to say. And I'm aware of that. So copyright needs to be uh, to filled in, and not filled in 10 years ago with that old-fashioned way, but with the new technology in mind. And what I'm worried about, and that is what ACTA is also uh, um, approaching, but again, gone, but we have to solve the problem that is at stake, and that is the copyright, that we have to find a way in which, talking about a digital single market, so that means no borders anymore, no barriers anymore, but with talking about music, but also the audiovisuals and, and so on and so forth. We are facing that it's all ring-fenced by the collective societies. Well, if I have enemies, and I can assure you I have a long list of enemies, on that list are the collective societies. And I can't care less, for they are monopolists, and we are touching upon that one earlier. That is not about protecting the artists and the writers and the creators, it is about protection, that system, and perhaps it made sense 
a, a long time ago. But it doesn't make sense at this moment. And as long as we are not solving that problem, and as long as we are just looking in r the real world that illegally downloading stuff is at the end of the day just cutting off the fees for uh, the copyright for the artist. And just talking about Germany, 94, 95% of uh, the artists in Germany are only getting 1,000 euros copyright on an annual base. Well, if we are aware of that, then there's something rotten in the state. That can't be the real world. And <laughs> so let's fight for that. And ACTA is put in the cold hands, and we know that is time consuming, and we know nearby what the outcome will be, but okay. But let's not stop our activity for solving the copyright. And the longer we wait, the more it is getting a normal attitude, for it's not anymore the younger generation that is illegally dealing with uh, that stuff. It is also around my circle of friends, so to say, and I don't accept that. But we are to be blamed as long as we haven't taken the right decisions. So, a long story uh, answer for your question. That demonstration in the streets is a wake-up call for us that we are in a hurry and that time is not our friend. Gibt es da noch Fragen? Wir kommen noch rum. So ein paar Minuten hätten wir noch. Are there any more questions right now? Waiting for your hands. Well, what? What? Hi. Uh, sorry to bother again, but I can't kind of help but have to ask a question here because you talk about copyright and you say, you know, without copyright there will be no more art and literature and music. And that kind of is a weird thing because when copyright was introduced about, I don't know, four or five hundred years ago as a measure of censorship, because that is how it started in England, I believe, um, you would say there has been no art and literature and music until 500 years ago. I mean, that's kind of a weird thing. I think the fact that you say that 95% of the people uh, here in Germany don't get more than, say, a thousand euros for their creative works per year, and yet there is a huge amount of creative work being created, I think in itself is proof enough that I'm not saying we don't need copyright, but if it is, comes to a choice between freedom of speech and copyright, I way prefer freedom of speech because, you know, I think the arts will do just fine without copyright. Anyhow, not everybody was applauding, so don't make the wrong decision that you get the whole audience on your side. Um, Your, your, uh, your uh, example of a long time ago compared to now is not completely correct. Um, and of course, it's up to you to do that. For what we are talking now is with new technologies where people can indeed be far more creative in their own way of just taking um, a artist product and not giving a remuneration. I'm, I'm happy with and I'm, I'm grateful to your question for it gives me an opportunity to correct myself a bit. I'm not a, a strong protector of copyright as copyright as a system. I'm in for more creative forms of remuneration. My only for copyright is an instrument. If you know a better instrument, and by the way, with the technology development, talking about cloud computing, there will be, for me, absolutely certain, um, a proposal where we can tackle the copyright system in a better way than we did before. And we see already with initiatives, Spotify, and there are a lot of uh, examples where the industry is so creative that 
anyhow for the consumer and the connecting of the devices, it is possible to deal with it in a legal, in a proper way, so to say. So for me, it is, I think that everyone who is creative and who is just making something, service, product or whatever, that at the end of the day, there is a decent remuneration for that. And it's nothing to do with freedom of speech. I'm a, far, I'm a liberal, so I would curse in the church when I would say I'm not in favor for freedom of speech. And I sincerely hope that you got already from my acting so far that I am indeed not uh, shy to act if, if that is uh, needed. By the way, very interesting, but that is talking about freedom of speech. I asked a couple of wise people uh, to prepare a report talking about freedom of speech. And um, they are uh, absolutely, four of them, uh, a former Minister of Justice of Germany, uh, a former president of one of the Baltic states, and a um, acting uh, professor and a former advocate general of the court uh, in Luxembourg, they are preparing freedom of speech principles, and that will make a big rocking the boat also in the European Parliament. For I don't accept anymore that if one country is acting not in line with our principles, that we just say, well, let's find out how we can just protect them and so on. It's over. We should uh, be aware that our democracy in Europe is based on principles and freedom of speech is one of a very important uh, issue. So for me, it is not. There is only one way of uh, copyright. Be creative and give us a hand and the technology will give us a help. But it is, at the end of the day, not a free lunch. We have one last question over here. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Wolfgang Zenges and I'm one of the uh, co-initiators of the Cultural Commons Collecting Society. It's an initiative to um, found a new collecting society for free licenses and uh, non-commercial um, Creative Commons uh, licenses. And um, looking at the um, uh, um, um, topics uh, that uh, you considered uh, to, to look for new ideas uh, in, in licensing and uh, for copyright, uh, would there be a chance to uh, support uh, such a project uh, from your side, from your bureau? At the end of this session, come over and uh, give me your card and let's discuss it. Uh, okay. if, if there is uh, a ground to go on. Yeah? Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, here is one. Yeah, the last question. <laughs> Hello. Um, I just wanted to address the copyright uh, topic again because uh, I want to clarify something that uh, may not be clear to some of you because copyright is not the same thing as distributing art. Copyright is the right the artist holds itself and um, I think it's correct to hold on to that. But uh, what we need is a reform of, of um, ways to distribute art, to make money, to, um, uh, to guarantee artists that they can live off their art. And um, I think uh, copyright uh, is not the problem itself. It's the, uh, the problem that the artists do not get directly a reward for their work. And um, with your position on um, ACTA, for example, uh, I think uh, it is a very important thing uh, to also consider citizens' um, worries that will uh, come with the introduction of such uh, new uh, things like ACTA or in, uh, outside the Europe, uh, uh, CISPA or other things are in the discussions as well. It's a global um, movement, I think. And uh, I want to ask you, uh, what kind of efforts will the EU, um, uh, does the EU intend to um, 
uh, achieve a reform on um, uh, art distribution or rewarding artists better uh, without um, uh, without uh, uh, taking freedom of speech or uh, uh, installing, uh, for example, a filtering or surveillance system in the digital world. Just make it quite clear and uh, not giving hope for an issue that I can't fill in. For normally spoken, I'm um, following the line that I can be quite clear in what is within my responsibility and what's not. Copyright, whatever new form and so on, is for me talking about the decent remuneration of a product or service that is already delivered. And that is, if you are doing something for your living, then you are also expecting that you can earn a decent living out of it. Having said that, uh, what you are touching upon is, in general terms, what could be done for a artist-friendly climate, if I get your uh, question uh, correct. That's not within my portfolio, number one. Um, and that is not really what is in the portfolio of the European Commission, for you know that there is still quite a bit um, linking in the hands of the, the uh, member states itself. So this is far more for uh, member states itself, and I wouldn't touch upon the policy of the German government, neither of uh, governments of uh, for example, my yeah, government at home. Having said that, the European Commission is stimulating in the form of grants and in the form of um, uh, pushing programs for artists too. But that is just a drop in the ocean of uh, the issue that you are counting. But let's first solve the other problem, for that for me is main. And I promise you that I won't rest before we have done more, but I need your help, I need your backing and demonstrations like you did before would just give me a hand talking about uh, pushing my colleagues in the college too.